everyone. Good morning. Welcome to this Triforce podcast, which will probably be going out over Chris- over the Christmas over the Christmas time. Wow! And my, my doorbell ha- is just ringing. Hang on a second. Yeah. Have to- it's all right. <laughs> we, we can we can fill. Perfect. We timing. can fill. How have you been this week, Sips? I've been uh, not as sick as you this week. It sounds like you sound a little bit uh, raspy. Oh, uh, just something. Um, came in on on Monday. I started to feel poorly. I think it was Monday. Yeah, it was Monday. I just sort of woke up and I just thought, oh, God. Like on Sunday, I thought I could feel a hint of something coming on, you know, when you get that coldy inbound sort of feeling. And then Monday, it was like, yeah, I actually am sick. Yeah. And then, it's the worst feeling, isn't it? When you oh, get that drip at the back of your throat leading oh, you, up to you know like a it's full- coming. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Oh, I'm back. Man, that's and I, worse. That's all right. And I, I had that thing where, you know, you know when you have a headache and it just seems like the outside of your head, it's like yeah. a surface yeah. headache and then um scratchy voice and, and people everyone in chat is like, Oh my god, it's COVID, it's COVID. I, I don't have a cough or a temperature. So so it just shows, I guess, that the common cold is stronger than COVID, I'm guessing. It's, it's just how can, is it how? How is have it I more got infectious? It? it must have a bigger trans. Do you know what I mean? You must have, must have, like, each of these things, like, once once you get a certain amount of people vaccinated with COVID, right, it'll have, it won't be able to spread because there'll be, like, too much herd immunity. Right, yeah, That's yeah. kind of how disease works, right? Yeah. But I guess the common cold. There's a cold, new strain of it, apparently. Did you uh, hear about this new, who knows, dude. new deadly strain? Of, I don't, yeah, they said I don't that think previously. that's going to affect yeah. they the said vaccinations, that though. Because it's, it's the same thing with the flu jab. Like, I think that if you can still get enough people protected, even even if even if the vaccine isn't as strong against a different strain, it'll still be it'll reduce the sort of what the R number, if you like, how much it can right. spread, like how many people yeah, spread yeah. it to other people. I mean, isn't the main it's thing important. with the cold that there's like loads and loads and loads of little cold viruses out there just extant all the time, chilling? And there's like because of the type of it's not a virus, is it? The cold is I don't know what it is. It it's is, like yeah, a, it's a virus. A, a, is it a virus? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. when people say. I have a cold. Why don't they say I have a virus? Some people do. Uh, you hear that yeah, more so do. in the UK. It's like, uh, you know, they say oh, I've got some sort of virus or whatever. They don't I necessarily a, just default at cold. But a virus to me is something you can treat with antibiotics, whereas a cold is something you can't. Like, so I thought there no, was a difference. virus very specifically isn't antibiotics. Bacterial infections. Yeah. So when I have a yeah, chest infection, virus. is that bacteria in my body? Yes, usually. Well, it depends. That can be caused by virus. It's complicated. That's what I'm saying. Mm, it is complicated. Anyway. Anyway. Anyway, I anyway listen, I, I have a COVID story for you guys. If you Let's would hear like, it. If you would like to hear it. Um, this is my, this is the first time I think I've been, uh, affected by COVID beyond the sort of general lockdown or whatever. We're currently in full isolation and we have been for a couple of days because right. my son, uh, was in contact with somebody last Monday, not like, sorry, the, the Monday before last, um, they think that he was, uh, on, on a bus with somebody who has, subsequently tested positive for COVID and uh, was therefore directly in contact with this person and uh, is now being forced to isolate. And I have to take him to be tested today. I have to take wow. him to have a test. Ooh. Yeah, It's a day 10 well, test I'm to see to if he's s- positive or negative. I don't want to hear the story well, about my, that. Uh, mm. My eldest has been, her entire year has been sent home for the last week of school. So she's home right. and she's homeschooling. And because a couple of kids in her year have tested positive. We're keeping my youngest home from school as well, because obviously yeah. she shares a room with her sister, and we're all just kind of staying at home. I mean, I've been self-isolating since March anyway, um, as much as possible, just living indoors, like I was saying to Sips. I, I don't know how I got a cold. I don't leave the house, but they no, do. No, but if your yeah. kids are at school and stuff, they, they, they bring stuff back, right? Exactly. Like there's, there's still stuff floating around. But, but um, so that's why we're keeping them home, because, you know, yeah. So, so with my son, in my son's case, he's on he's on this bus. They they use this bus to take them up to do swimming every Monday. Right, right. And uh, they they've identified that whoever has tested has gone on to test positive for COVID was on the same bus, right? So everybody who was on that bus has to isolate, oh. um, but the rest of his class doesn't. So half of his class, or like three quarters of his class, are still going back to school. Um, you know, operating normally or whatever. Mm. And it's just the kids that were on the bus that are now having to isolate. But we've only found out about this like seven, eight days after the fact, right? Mm. So like, I don't know. It feels like he had the whole rest of the week at school 
uh, with all the other kids in his class. Like um, he had the whole weekend. Like he went up to see. Oh his, right, of course. Yeah. He went up to see his yeah. granny and stuff. He like we went to town. Like we did a whole bunch of stuff on the weekend because obviously we we had no idea. We were just sort of carrying on as usual. Yeah, yeah. And then went to school on Monday, even this Monday. And then at the end of the day, uh, on Monday, <laughs> they contact us and they're like, oh, yeah, he's got to isolate. He's going to have to go get a test and stuff. You guys will all have to isolate with him. He can't leave the house, nothing. And it's like, I, I, I get it. Like, I, I know that kids are, are, aren't like able to spread it as easily or whatever. But it just feels like the, the time that it takes for somebody to show symptoms, to then test them, to then get a result and everything. I feel like if my son does have it, which I don't actually think he does have it, right. but he might. I mean, it's possible. And if he does, I feel like he would have spread it around to a ton of people. Like, yeah, it's already all, already. Too already late you know already. what I mean? Yeah. Like it feels like I, I. It feels like I get that they're doing like the best that they can given the circumstance or whatever. But I, like, part of me also thinks like, does, mm, holy crap! I can mm. see how it's spreading so much. You know what I mean? It's just like impossible to. Um, it's impossible to isolate people from it, like in yeah, it's, in it's an appropriate amount of time, you know. For, yeah, I mean, it's it's obvious. Uh, it, there's lots of reasons why it's problematic, and I think some of it is the fact that some people don't show symptoms when they're sick. Yeah, I yeah. think some people are more resi- more resistant to the symptoms as well, and they're they're more they're like, I don't, I'm not really sick. It's just a little cough, you know, yeah, and, yeah. or just something like that. They don't have it as severely, and so. You know, I think those are the sort of super spreader people who end up causing these big bloody outbreaks super spreaders. because out of their own ignorance, though they don't they don't realize that they're sick. And but before there was no way to even test. You know, um, there was no way for you even to think, oh well, maybe I am sick. Maybe I should. Yeah. You know, especially if if you're like, well, if your boss is like, well, you know, you're coming in or else you're going to lose your job. Yeah, that sort of stuff's very tough to deal with, isn't it? Like, you know, there's no if you're not given a, an out. I guess like the vaccines come in though, which is interesting. And here in the UK, anyway, we we were the first people to approve this this vaccine, yeah. and um, we've been jabbing old folks left, right, and yeah, centre. Yeah, they've, they've even they started rolling it out old, here um, in Jersey. There's a couple of old people. Who did who've... they do? They did Ian McKellen, Ian McKellen this morning, apparently. So I reckon we need to get all the other national treasures sorted out. We need to get yeah. Dame Helen Mirren, Dame yeah. Stephen Fry, <laughs> yeah, Fry, Richard Attenborough needs needs oh one. Oh my God, David, David Attenborough. Attenborough. Richard Attenborough's dead. Yeah. Oh yeah, sorry, he David. Yeah. Whoops. I, I always get the uh, um, that's all right. Mixed up. Take him up. He's a treasure. Judy Dench, Trevor McDonald, um, Patrick Stewart. I mean, Barbara Windsor was unfortunately died, died this yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's passed away unfortunately. The, has the Queen been done? Oh God, I'm the sure Queen's she has. Been? Phil Mitchell. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I think she's she's likely been done, but you won't hear about it until, if ever, until like like long after the fact, right? Because is Dale Winton still alive? Dale Winton, Dale, I don't Dale think Dale is actually. <laughs> I think he died, didn't he? I'm pretty no, sure he passed away. Dead. Yeah, yeah, he did. He died two years ago. No way. Yeah, he was looking really rough. I don't know what he died of, but I, I remember. Let's get all the. He did like some uh, Dale goes to Florida show or something, and man, I couldn't believe it. He looked like he was on his way out. Even in that, he just oh, looked dear. awful. Yeah. We got to get the That's entire the entire cast and crew of. This wasn't of that Strictly. old, you know? He was only no. like he he was he was born in 1972. He's only eight years older than me. It's like he's had a hard life. Yeah, sweeping no, he wasn't. He was he was 62 when he died. He was born in 1955. Dale Winton. Are you looking? No, are you looking, looking at Dale at the Chipmunk else. or Dale no, Winton? No, Dale which... Winton. Oh, sorry, he was born 1950. Oh, sorry, years active. I was looking at right, right. on uh, Wikipedia. Oh. Sorry, yeah, David Jason. We need to, is he still alive? Is he still going? I thought David he Jason's still, still alive. Going? Yeah, wow. he's still going. He's 80. Dale Boyd. Oh, yeah. He looks, he looks he looks 80 as well. Crikey. What about Maggie Smith? Is she still going? Maggie Paul Smith. McCartney. Yeah, Paul uh, McCartney's still going. Yeah. Paul Ringo McCartney. as well. Ringo's 80 now. Good lord. You can't do Paul and not do Ringo, right? No, you I'm saying to. let's do Ringo and not do Paul. George Harrison died, didn't he? He was the Yeah, he yeah, the, he died a long time ago. He was the best of them. 2001. Joanna Lumley, is she still going? She's still I, I feel like every national treasure I also say are they still yeah, going? Yeah. Yeah. No, Joanna Lumley's still going. Um, Liz Hurley. Is? Can we get Liz, Liz Hurley still done, please? Going, yeah. Oh, please. And Nigella. God. Nigella. Yes. Christ. These are important because if we lose any of these folks, we're going to, Britain's going to be crushed. Tess Daly. You know, I think it's more important for Tess our Tess Daly's spirit. still going. Man, is Tess Daly ever going? Holy That's God. what I'm saying. we got to protect that. I reckon we don't even like, I reckon we don't even bring him in to inject him. We just do one of those tranquilizer darts, you know, that they or use just to hunt them down and with. zap them. Tess Daly looks like yeah. she's twenty. It's crazy, and she's like fifty or something. She's she's she's, uh, <laughs> she's a hottie. She's uh, she's married to that lad Vernon Kay, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a prick. He cheated on her too. Yeah, with like don't, a, some don't give him the injection. 
Give yeah. her the injection. <laughs> Vernon, you're not getting it, okay? I'm sorry to say. You can't you can't treat someone like that and then expect to get it, a vaccination. I mean, it just doesn't work like that, uh, Vernon. I, I, I think it will, I, I'm looking forward to a time when it goes back to normal, and I'm sure everyone else is as well. Because I think um, this has been a I very think, weird you know, time. I hate, the, I hate how they say the new norm and the new normal and stuff like that. I hate all these new words that have come off the back of COVID, shielding and bubbling and the new normal and blah, blah, blah. But I think it's going to take a really, really, really long time to get back to 100% normal. You know what I mean? If ever. I, think- I, I, I really want to know how... I've not really watched any soaps lately, but I assume like TV soaps are dealing yeah, with it. Yeah, well, they have to incorporate it in. Most soaps are based, well, British soaps at, at least are based in some form of present day reality, right? So they usually um, will try to tackle topics like like EastEnders, for example. I don't really right. watch it. My wife watches it. But there's always, sure there's they, there's great, always like... Um, yeah. They have to tap into the real they world. They do, yeah, yeah. The but there's always to, like... At the end of certain episodes, if they've dealt with like you know mental health or something, they're yeah, like, they have that if hotline. anything in the show has affected you, you can call this hotline to speak to somebody or whatever. And I think it's the same with COVID. I Do think, you reckon like, when you call that hotline, it's a recording by one of the cast members in character? Yeah, like it's still right, mate. Thanks for calling the hotline. I heard you've been <laughs> yeah. having trouble with your mental health. <laughs> Come down to the calf. And me and Grant will sort it right out with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Listen, I think it is a bit. Do like you owe that. money to some bald cunt? <laughs> well, you better pay that fucking money back, you prick. <laughs> or else we'll fucking come over here and we'll mug you right off. <laughs> we'll mug him. We'll mug you right off, son. We'll mug you. Yeah, you know I, mean? I think it is. I think it's a bit like that. But yeah, I think. Um, I think they just basically because they they do have to distance while filming and wear masks and stuff. I think they've incorporated a lot of it into the actual shows. You know, well, like, two things. Just, First of all, Tom Cruise in rare, likable mode, bollocking crewmates for not wearing their masks on the set of Whoa, Mission Impossible. Rare, likable mode? That was like one of those fucking... It, I listened to that Tom Cruise audio where he was going off on yeah. one at the crew, and it, it was just like... It was... It was like, what was that? Excellent. It was mad. I was with it him. It was madness, though. It was, he was, it was so aggressive and so unnecessary and so like crazy. I, I get it. I, I have I a get, feeling like, he's under a lot of pressure. Because they can get shut down like that. Here, listen, hold on. I don't know if the mic picked up my finger snap. Like that. Because yeah, if they like get the spotted, they, it, it, yeah, if they're spotted uh, fucking it up, there goes the whole movie. And he's right that the industry is, you know, is this possible to make a big budget action movie with uh, a megastar like Tom Cruise? Is it possible under these restrictions? So this is like a big test case. And some dingus fucking it up. Uh, I, I'm with Tom, actually. You know, are people on the side of Tom Cruise for that rant? I am. Rant? I think he's right. <laughs> that rant, Tom that's, Tom that's Cruise, Tom rant. Cruise that rant. has done a rant. Mr. Cruise, <laughs> ranting. <laughs> um, what was the other thing I was going to uh, say? Oh yeah, why why is it? You said soap operas tend to be set in our reality. I would like one that was set in a very slightly different reality. Well, I'm not I saying think, spells look, and magic. I'm saying yeah, look you no know, further. Other than I guess like um, the archers, like the um, the the radio one is is a little bit like yeah, that's not set. I don't know if that's reality. meant to be hyper realistic. I mean, most soaps aren't, but I think the archers is like uh, it, it feels to me like it's a little bit more of a I don't know, like an like an idea, an idealistic right, view. Right. But of I'm life saying sort of thing, I want right? it to be like an alternate history timeline. Oh. Where they're like, wow, can you believe that uh, the Crankies are now the leaders of the free world? You know, right? Okay, and, yeah, or you something like that. Big like I, I wanted to go, and then we we explore that alternate reality, but through the lives of ordinary people having yeah. ordinary problems in sure. what is now a world run by giant centipedes or something. Like that, <laughs> well, you know? I mean, I think you're asking for a lot there. I'm not sure that any demographics on this earth are ready for that. All right, I guarantee um, you. I guarantee you more people yeah. would, would watch it. <laughs> the crankies. Well, I mean, you're, you're probably right. Like, I think I think if they would even just put out a pilot, I think they'd be amazed by the reception. Give it a go. That's yeah, all I'm saying. Give it a go. Give it a good old-fashioned try. I hate try. to say it, but Can't like, hurt. The, so many TV shows have borrowed from soaps that they almost become them anyway. You know, I think a lot of people, you know, always said like, you know, Star Trek Deep Space Nine was just like a soap on a space station. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because it felt like at each... You know that was the sort of it was the sort of petty 
family dramas and everyday mundanity that mundanity. was serialized. Mund- 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 yeah, like just the, the, the same shit we talk about in this podcast. You no, know, I just like the use the of the word mundanity. The can, we, can we talk about things that... I, I feel like December for me has been a month where I have... I, I feel like I've had a bit of a rut where I haven't really, you know, like fallen in love with anything. You know what I mean? Uh, and and what I mean by that is like TV shows, gaming stuff. Like I think I feel like I've had two or three months where I just haven't really found anything overly exciting or or whatever. You know, you have like those phases yeah. every once in a while. You you so so yeah. My my input on that for you to you sips is that I think you have been very much afraid to get into something that you're not going to like. No, no, but I, what I want to say is well, that... Well, you put, you put like a boycott down on, on the new WoW expansion, which is fair enough, but then I think you didn't also want to play Cyberpunk. Yeah, no, I didn't. I still haven't. But listen, what, what I'm saying is... Uh, this month, I've been surprised because I've like come out of the rut. I found TV shows that I really like. Um, okay. I've been playing games that I really like. Like the surprise one for me recently has been uh, Call of Duty, Black Ops, Cold War, Zombies. I've never played so like a I, Zombies I mode before. I sent you the copy Holy of this. Holy crap. Um, because uh, that was it. was the day we supported yeah, the Jingle we, Jam Yeah, we bundle, did it for Sweaty which, Shooters in the Jingle Jam. Yeah. Which uh, which was very successful, by the way, if we haven't talked about uh, we that. We will, don't um, worry. It, yeah, very, yeah. it, ended, it ended a couple of days ago. It was that was very, last very, week's yes. news, Lewis. Yeah, Lewis, jeez. That was. I'm but, sorry. Um, I'd, um, I'd never played a Zombies game before, a Zombies mode. I, kn- I mean, obviously, I've heard of it. Like, it's. I knew you popular. would like it because it's your kind but of man, thing. Man, it's so good! Holy crap! I just like I don't know what it is like about it. Just the pacing is phenomenal. Like I love the um, the gunplay, the movement, like the sounds, everything. Uh, I love how you upgrade stuff. I love how you can kite zombies around in these big trains and then just murder them all. And oh man, it is so much fun. My input on this is that you know the new COD game. It's COD Seventeen. Yeah, they've had a long time sure. to perfect this formula. Yeah. It sells millions of i know copies. but i'm not interested in the multiplayer i'm not interested in the battle royale war zone or anything like that but this the zombies mode but is great. they've been developing zombies for 10 years yeah probably it shows now. man and, it's really you know, good they really know what makes a fun yeah. zombies mode yeah. and yeah if you i've been hooked you, i've been playing I, it I every day since i knew that you'd like it been playing it every night i've been streaming it everything I've, I've loved it it's really nice to find something that's not like it, like just naturally that you like that you get into and you don't feel like you're being like duped into it. Like I know if I would have played WoW, I probably would have liked it on the one hand, but part of me would have always felt like, oh, fuck, you know, I'm wasting my time playing this. Like, the, you know, this it, it's not going to lead to good things sort of thing. But whereas like... Yeah, I totally get that. Yeah. And I, 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 I think I know that feeling where you've discovered something. Yeah. Like a really cool game. Like, I think it was for me, it was Death Stranding this year. Oh, like I, that was like a good I wasn't, one too. I wasn't excited for it, but I, I was told that it was different and interesting and I had to play yeah. it. And I loved oh, it. Oh, me too. I, I loved it, it too. It was so um, good. And it was totally worth. I played the some doozies this year. Weird games that I've been and... really excited for. Oberdin was one of them as well. Man, I love that. I wasn't that Death a great Stranding, game? Death Stranding, Oberdin. Yeah. I've oh, really been enjoying zombies. Like I didn't ever thought I would be the kind of guy that would like that sort of mode in that game. Like I'm not a COD player. I've never really played many COD games or whatever. But but geez, you've been playing really it with. Good people though you've taken a leaf out of the pflex book and you've, you've retained a couple of friends from yeah. the kind of yeah, yeah. among us streams that you did and i think taking those through to a smaller arena and playing it with friends is actually a really satisfying thing to do so, yeah. talk, talking of uh my my lads i want to give them a shout out on the podcast if i may i know sips is anti shout no, out sorry um but i <laughs> I'm just we, we, I, I don't know if you guys saw the the rust stream. <laughs> they knocked it out the park on the rust stream you're right they really well did. if you haven't seen it i i honestly do recommend it it wasn't the most popular stream of the jingle jam which was a shame but uh it did all right and i, I think me spiff and wilson a uh, had a great time and my lads spent a long time building this world and this story and slacks you remember sir action slacks he, he popped yeah. in and did a guest appearance and it was just it was absolutely phenomenal and i was moved very very moved by the fact that these guys all came together and, and just did it um and i think it summed up for me 
the Jingle Jam spirit, which is that we all come together, but it's not just us. Obviously, it's all the people that donate. And it's also mm -hmm. all these people throughout various streamers' communities that give up their time as well. Like Spiff had these two tech gods who came in and saved the CSGO stream. This hosting company that was in chat just came to our rescue and hosted it for us and stuff. And nice. it was just, it was really a beautiful weekend of coming togetherness and also then raising a shitload of money. So well done. Yeah, I think there's loads of people who put so much time and effort into Jingle Jam that you included you Lulu. Realize. you deserve yeah. credit too dude because i know you you put together one 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 flav of a good bundle this year and um i think you yeah deserve the, a huge it was amount yeah of credit. it went it went really good this year it was good yeah. i i did well but it wasn't just me though actually like a lot of people in the yogs a lot of people have reached out to a lot of people have played games and no developers and no people and have met people over the time and so you know they all contributed as well and i'd say probably a good like 20 percent of the games that came in came in from people not not that i reached out to you know right. just because they were like oh i'm a big fan of ravs playing this or a big fan of leo playing that well, or whatever. That's good. so yeah it was it was a, a real team it effort. was it's a funny thing the jingle jam because people seem to i think a lot of charity you know r run their charity like a business and they have to right like oxfam have a chief executive and they pay him a million pounds or whatever you right, know and right. it's kind of when you hear that stuff you're like that's weird but you realize that they have to right and that it is worth it yeah. you know to run this thing like a business and have stores and make is sure that why you're, don't, you're like, keeping lose money you're keeping one million pounds of the money raised as, as payment. i'm announcing it now you're entitled. no so well, we I so I always run Jingle Jam like it's a church fate right. or whatever, and, and no one gets anything. You know, we don't have any one. We we it's entirely voluntary, um, which I I always think is is the safe way to yeah, do it. Of right? Course. I don't want necessarily to be one of those things. Because you hear about these charities who certainly in America, like the Susan something whatever, who end up only like 10% of their actual yeah, yeah. donation goes to charity in the end because a lot of it gets to, goes to all the executives. I don't know. I really hate that kind of... I've always been very scared of that because I feel like that not only undermines the whole point of charity, but it feels like it's just incredibly... Those people are going to hell. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like the people who run that are going to also, hell. Also, don't, <laughs> don't forget about all those churches all. that supposedly raise money, but it's just for them. Like they just buy private jets and shit with it, and and live large and pay zero taxes. Like it's a massive scam, um, which is a, it's a. Sh it's I a don't shame. know how they can square their they faith don't. and just and and uh, that in their heads. They're, they're immoral. Uh, they people. must be so deluded. No, I I, well. I don't they, think they're they, deluded. I think they're evil. I think there's a. The, I genuinely do not think. I mean, if you live a lie long enough, I guess you can come to believe it. Um, but I think they're just devious, um, manipulative sociopaths, possibly even psychopaths, um, who've just been able to construct a persona that that tricks people into thinking they're the right guy to give all their money to. And I, I know uh, John Oliver did a really good episode about these churches that send people cards or whatever saying you've got to pay it forward and then you'll get some back but you've got to keep paying in and then you know it's seed money and if you put five hundred dollars of seed money in god god will reward you and it's things like you have to send in twenty five dollars and then they send you back one dollar but they say you must now send in fifty dollars of seed money you must include the dollar bill that you got back as well so you have to send any money that you receive from them back and just r rinse and repeat, and it's like a huge scam. Anyway, you can look up the episode; it's a really good one. But yeah, yeah, there's some really good stuff. Like I love John Oliver; I really like his the way he. The, obviously, the, the 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 topics that he tackles are very American centric often, and so therefore don't like necessarily. Yeah. But then again, maybe it's the same. Maybe we have the same problems in I, our I country, know. but we don't know I, about them because we don't is, have a show who, that who covers is the, that uh, sort of stuff. I mean, first of all, I think we're we're a far less religious society um in in the uk it's certainly not there's definitely less of a less less of a um like an inter interweave between politics and uh and yeah and religion i mean you, you like don't get many yeah, that, politicians that, that seems a lot more so in uh in in america right, right. there's definitely some religious oh, yeah. influence on i mean when was the last time when was the last time you saw a british politician talk about god no i know uh, but, they, but they still go through the motions of appearing to go to church and stuff like oh, that oh that's don't a they? that's just i mean geez everybody fucking at christmas goes to church you know what i mean everybody in that sort of fusty 
conservative y kind of world goes there and they yeah, have the, of course, yeah. what is it, the orange? What is it? Chris Dingle? Chris Kringle? I don't know what the fuck it's called. You know when you get the fucking orange and it's got sticks <laughs> in it? Midnight Mass. No, it's yeah, not. That's, that's Catholic. I'm talking it's Protestant. Different. It's like you Chris get a Dingle. fucking orange. An orange with a candle stuck yeah, in it. Yeah, there you go. I mean, the, the fucking. I always say, so I worked for the Church of England. Sorry, for I can't year, be more you know. specific. I love, I love it. all this religion. The religious chat brings out all the fucks and fuckings. <laughs> like, oh, the fuck, I went to fuck, a, fuck me, the fucking fucking orange with the fucking candle. I went to fucking. a Church of England school. I went to a Church of England school for ages, and I went in, when I was in the Scouts. Every Sunday, we had to go go to church. You know, I was I was very I went to Sunday school for yeah. years, oh, absolutely years. Oh, hey, and my parents. I'm sorry. I've just thought of something, what? and this is before I forget it. And I think I, we we have spoken about church in the Scouts before. I remember the episode distinctly. It was uh, eighty seven, episode eighty seven. Okay, cool. Um, I could be wrong on the number, but anyway, Twitch has banned the word simp and the word virgin. Oh yeah, yeah. I was going to mention this have as well. They? Yeah, this, yesterday they did a um, they did a town hall, which was like um, like people who who sort of like high ups or or like community managers at Twitch or whatever. And um, so they've decided to now uh, take action against people who routinely use terms like uh, simp, incel, or or virgin. You're not allowed to call people virgins anymore because it's like rude, I guess, or or whatever. I mean, I don't really use yeah. the term simp um, or incel at, at all, really. They're just not not terms that I would default to or or really use. Um, but man, I'm going to miss calling people virgins. Like that's like my go-to insult. Like if somebody beats me at a game automatically, they must be a virgin. Right. I like, and I'll, and I'll be pretty vocal about it. So I don't know what I'm going to do, but at the same time, I feel like from what I can tell anyway, most people in my chat are, um, really sexually active hunks. So, um, maybe okay. it's not that much of a problem I'm, at all really i don't know I, i'm down for this right i'm down for i'm down for the, all this stuff i think it's a good idea Why? I think f maybe for different reasons necessarily than other people think it is but i think that it's 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 damaging to certain streamers certainly their income to casually refer to their audience as simps or white knights or kind of like you know, I think I think smaller female streamers who aren't who are trying to just be gamers. I think I think viewers are worried about being called a simp, and that might drive them. That has driven them away often. I, I think I've got the Twitch app here. I load it up this morning because it just boots up automatically. Because I use it for. I no used explanation to use it for needed, sir. Minecraft add-ons and WoW add-ons, but they've actually moved that off the Twitch app now. Yeah, it's so I don't like think I'm ever going to use the Twitch app again. Forge or whatever, Wolf um, or but something. The Twitch app all opens, and the first three streams on there are Titties. a woman in a, sw a swimsuit. Um, I, this is all based on stuff you've watched before, by the way. I don't know if you really <laughs> want to carry it on down. This I'm not road. logged in. Oh, so no, but even without being logged in, it's still like there's still some. Uh, recommendation stuff based on previous viewing. So, well, look. So, yeah, a woman in a swimsuit, sure. Go get a woman on. in a swimsuit. <laughs> Uh, a woman with a uh, just a uh, just a cleave. A pair, woman pair, with a cleavage. Out, yeah, uh, that's a what I thought cleavage. you were going to say. A pair of cleavage and someone watching Gordon Ramsay. That that is what I've got on my Twitch Twitch fucking Twitch app, yeah. and I'm not logged in. I don't have any. I don't. I don't really watch streams from home. Certainly, I'm not this. I'm not on this computer because I'm at home today, and. I, uh, you know, I, I'm just like, this is what Twitch is offering up me, I guess, because that's probably what most outsiders want to uh, works. Do you know what I mean? It, they, they, everything's built on algorithms now, right? So surely that's what works. And, and I think that's the bigger issue that, you know, the, the titties, it's, I watched, I, I, I watched, I know that this streamer with the swimsuit um, just stands there because I've seen it before and she just, she just stands there for hours like six hours by by a pool with a little set of microphone headphones on yeah. just 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 literally because and people pop in and out people talk to her she talks in broken english because she's eastern european or whatever you know because i and i i imagine it's almost like i think it's almost like it could be pimping right where some guy gets gets his hot girlfriends and he's like okay i'm gonna make you a twitch channel you're just gonna stand here for six hours in a swimsuit right. yeah you're gonna like talk babe station. garbage to chat and you know, I'll get a ring of them. We'll get a whole ring of them going. It's like a, he's probably sat there in his like fucking gold chain. He's got like his his rings. Do you know what I mean? He's all he's got his pimp cane. He's got his pimp hat, 
you know, he's like, make sure you don't call them simps because, you know, that will drive them away and they'll, they, you know, that's not what we want now. And also that will get you banned. I apparently. think the, the issue is that, like you said, if there's a someone streaming who all, all of her fans are getting called simps because they watch the stream. Yeah. Like like any any woman who streams, I'm pretty sure that you'll get some twats turn up. And if you say something and people in the chat criticize, oh, shut the fuck up, you simps. It's like, I get it. Like that that's rough. That that sucks. Banning the word simp. Can't you just do that as a channel? Like that's but what I do. It seems crazy. With a whole that, bunch of words. That these that some of these words are are chosen to be to be banned when there's when there's other terms that are being used that are not um that that seem to be like far worse right like i don't know like you like you go on any sort of like um first person shooter stream or whatever and like um you know there's still like still old sort of terms being used that were like used a lot maybe like in the 90s and but have just sort of like kept being used in in gaming like you said, um, the f word like uh like you know like you know like the r word or referring oh, referring yes. to to something as like gay which is not really like a, a thing you hear much anymore right like i think i think people, people have, mostly have kind of like curbed a lot that of that stuff. stuff but i guess like i had an email this week from someone who said they um oh god what was it so there was a there was an email that came in and it was like we got this expert available for interview. He's a flat Earth expert, and I <laughs> I said I said I almost I turned to Ben and I was like, does he have a fucking PhD in flat Earth studies? Do you know what I mean? Like, how can you be an expert in something that is is literally <laughs> just, right? It's just, I, but in the same sense, I feel like there's these people on Twitch who are creating toxic environments and maybe they want to remove these types of people maybe yeah. yeah from the platform by stopping them from using terms like incel it does incel does seem like a term that that is used by people who would believe in flat earth as well though do you know what I mean like those kind of the, the of thing people. is the the whole incel movement and like you know what are the, what is it the the pill what well, i don't know what color pill you meant to the take. red R pill yeah whichever one it is I, I i'm not taking it but then it, it's like that whole community and the, the, there's loads of subreddits and the, you know all that kind of stuff. It's it's not something to protect. Like it's not a pleasant place. It's a deeply misogynistic and horrible environment. And an awful lot of the memes and and stuff that come out of that sort of I, I hesitate to call it community because it's it's much bigger than that. It, it's not it's not. I mean you know oh we got to protect the poor incels. To me the the removal of the word simps and incels smacks of them defending what they know a lot of their fucking user base yeah. is. Yeah, I mean they know a that a lot of the people that, that watch sure. these streams are simps and incels and are desperate and sad and that they're not defending women or or anything like that. I think they're defending fucking incels. I think I, I, is that another way to yeah. look at it? You sure, but I I, yeah, I think sure. that I I feel like uh, like language policing is 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 never a, a great thing, right? Like I I I I, at the same time, I don't want to support toxicity. Obviously, I don't want these these places to exist where people um, can can like you know sort of all subscribe to this like strange idea or whatever and take it very seriously or whatever. But I feel like that like there's a lot of context being missed with a lot of this stuff too, right? You hear people use yeah. the term simping for all sorts of things, right? Like it's kind of right, it's right. one of those terms now that's just lost meaning. And in in in, in a way, it's, lexicon, it's just a made up yeah. word anyway, and it's just going to get replaced with another made up word, like. Pe right. pee, pee hands or like whatever you know like <laughs> no but it's just it's just another iteration right. of that it's just going to get replaced with something else so it, it ultimately yeah. the, it doesn't really word, matter yeah the, the word is not worth no about, it's that the it? word isn't the problem it's but, the, it's people's mentality but like you can't i think you're, you're never right. going to change people's mentality by policing language like it just doesn't make well, sense you, but you but you you have to keep going though i think that, that you know it was back in the day it was with something we you know we used to we had the, the spastic society, you know, for people who had. Hey, that um, was their society. Yeah, uh, well, and 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 we we that term got adapted and used f to mean, you know, right. someone 
it was originally from cerebral palsy, I think, wasn't it? Right, and right, so, right. I mean, I that, think about it, it was a medical term, wasn't it? Like, taken and misused. Spastic, yeah. It just sounds horrible. Yeah. It's such a god awful word for crazy. Well, sake. it's like the it's like well, the word like, retard. I think at one point um, that was they people could say and use that word, and it, it wasn't deemed like a like a sort of like a derogatory, toxic thing. Like this is a long time ago. I think I don't know. Um, but like, I mean, I remember like, I, I remember hearing adults use that, use that term quite freely when I was growing up in like the eighties and stuff. Yeah, like it wasn't, but I mean, geez, you also heard people yes. using racist I'm not, terms I'm not defending it, but terms. I'm just saying like a right, lot right. of this stuff is, is an evolution as well. Right. Maybe this is just right, the right. next it's evolution. Hard, right. Because if it's in common parlance, like simp, you know, we, I've definitely used the word simp casually as a joke and it may be in 10 years, that's going to be very frowned upon. And I'm. You know, I'm going to apologize for it, but, right, you know, but here's well, the problem I don't with think that. that I, what is a simp? A simp is like kind of like it, it's 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 kind of like a, a a white knight, but implied that you're you're like a big turbo virgin as well. You're like you're right. watching. So it's like, like you're someone, watching. <laughs> this is this is my virgin. understanding. Maybe that's wrong, but I, like I always thought that it meant that you're like um you're you're, you're kind of like um doing everything you can for this girlfriend that's not yours right you're watching like a girl streamer yeah. and you're defending her right, honor right. and all this stuff but i I, but she, I always thought more importantly she doesn't know you it, it like was that you. they gave a lot of money to these yes, people. yes that's too, it yeah. it tends to be that they're paying so they're like the super fans who think you know when you know when you watch these yeah uh, these when they find out Lewis, when they I find know, out that their favorite girl streamer actually has a life and a boyfriend and then they're like i've donated multiple millions of dollars to you in hopes that we could play Twitch sings together one day and you know, like that. I think that's a sim, right? right? Or I, I, I thought it was like that sort of hopelessly no, addicted to getting the oh my god, thank you, Carl 47. Thank you, that's turning me on a bit like that. Sorry, buddy. Like that's <laughs> that's simping, right? Is giving giving money and and time and and yeah. being all super nice, being Mr. massively nice guy invested. In chat. Yeah, and I think like so the term like I think traditionally it was meant to be sort of um, a a term used for for guys with who watch girl streamers, but I think now it's being used for you know people watching guy streamers. It's being used for all sorts of different things, right? Like it, you 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 hear that that term used a lot around various sort of of things right like um yeah and i think some people feel that it is a damaging term that you might think oh shit am i a simp am i am i a simp by donating to this this streamer you know i think twitch are concerned that there's this movement of yeah you're gonna um, somehow be um you know of of of, because twitch you know a lot of twitch streamers make the bulk of their income through donations and twitch i don't want that money i guess to go away not that they not that they see a big cut of it but i think they do see a cut of the bits and they see a cut of the subscriptions that's how they make their money and i think that i think that's part of it sure but i think part of it is also that it does seem like a bit of a but just a negative thing to have on the platform yeah i think that that's this it's a, it's a step in the in the direction of healing i just think they've Any- got bigger problems how about how about the fact that I can't play even a fucking five seconds of music? Sort that shit out. Yeah, well, I, I sort mean, that no, shit out. like on. separate, separate issues, obviously. But yeah, like it's, again, I think that's something that may come around eventually. You know, but for now, it's just not, it's not there. And that's because the I think there should industry in question maybe, is so fucking behind the times. It's oh, you it, it really Yeah, is. I think we need like a, a copyright free that ain't gonna Spotify happen ever. or a royalty free like section on Spotify. Something that but allows I don't want royalty to, free fucking music. Yeah. Well, some no of offense, it is but I, I don't it. listen to that shit. Fine though. Like, I'm sure it is fine. But here's the thing. Pe- people suggest that to me all the I time. I want to listen to some, just some good old fashioned classic rock. Fuck for Christ's sake! Right, <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't want to listen to some guy's version of classic rock who I've never heard of, and he's just, you know, he just plays like, oh, this is kind of a royalty-free version of that song. It's like I just want the song. Nobody, nobody opts to listen to. It would be like saying, you know what, we're not going to give you any actual branded products ever again. You can just have cheap, kind of similar imitation versions of that stuff. It's just as good. It's not just as good. That's why everybody's heard of these bands and they haven't heard of these guys i guess here's the question would you be willing to pay though yes would you be willing to pay like a I license know, a, a certain amount of money to have yeah, yes okay. for one i've said multiple be times worth, i want a plug-in 
that allows me to plug Spotify into Twitch, I will fucking pay. Tell me what the amount is. If it's like a thousand pounds a month, I'm not gonna do it. But nobody's watching Twitch streams for the music. Like if you're sitting there and just streaming music- There's still people playing copyright music on stream. Like still people doing it. I mean, as long as you delete the VOD, right? I guess Apparently so, yeah. So if you problem, don't if you but... don't create VODs and um or you don't allow people to create clips either. But again, I, without VODs and clips, it's, it, you know, th this is sort of... You're damaging your channel. You are, really, yeah. because you, you yeah. VODs and clips are the things that reach out beyond your channel, right? Like, sometimes they'll get posted on Reddit, or sometimes they'll get posted on Twitter, and and then right, people right. have a, another way of discovering you, and maybe turning into a, a viewer, or a sub, or a, a follower, or whatever. They can simp yeah. for you. Yeah, exactly. And maybe I'm, they're I mean, virgins. I'm not kidding, I don't but, know. But, but, but if, if we didn't have clips, I, I actually think my entire community would collapse within a moment. <laughs> yeah. we, we rely on them very heavily. I mean, the, there, are, there are 13 clips that are exclamation marks senile about me now. Senile 1, senile 2, and all the way up to 13 of me burning myself to death with a Molotov in CSGO, jumping off something and dying, shooting teammates. And that is like part of the lore and history. It would be like... Have you ever seen 1984 yeah. or read it? Yeah, I've read it. You yeah. know the way they talk about if you can remove a person from their past, you destroy the sense of, of, of who they are. And I think if you delete all the clips and all the VODs and everything, you, you're kind of deleting that person's past because then it only lives in memory and memories can fade with no permanent... I mean that, that retains there's certain the clips past, I, like the vital historical documents that are the clips. Yeah, well, there's certain clips of mine that I kind of wish were gone that I can't seem to get rid of, <laughs> even though I've deleted all my clips and stuff for this DMCA stuff. Like yesterday is a good example. There's no context for it either. Like at the time, it was kind of funny, I guess. Like I, I was playing Red Dead 2 and uh, I discovered that you were able to kick dogs. Which is like a yeah. running joke sure. for for like my channel right, right. or whatever. You're kicking dogs. I used yeah, to yeah, kick yeah. a it's lot not, of dogs in GTA. Animal. It's not that Sips no, 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 no. is some sort of animal. But, so this clip was obsessed. shared with somebody who has no context for this, and like, yes. I, I don't think that they, I don't think that they mind or whatever. They probably could see the funny side of it, or, but like, you you watch it back and you're like, holy crap! Like that does not look great. <laughs> like it's just right. that <laughs> is kind of disturbing. Yes. Like without any context whatsoever, it's uh, really um, well, it's, it's a it's really, just really how joy filled you are when you see that <laughs> you can kick wow, a dog. Oh my god! It's yeah, like, like a, you're so I'm like, I'm like, like your eyes light and up. everything. It's like you know you shouldn't be that excited about you know abusing an animal, but like it was just yeah. kind of funny at the time. I, I guess I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I was kind of uh, when I first saw that clip because I, I remember seeing it with you, the the dog kicker, and I was actually kind of shocked. Yeah, like I know that sounds silly, but I actually was like, wow, I didn't know Sips hated animals. No, no, but it's not and even that, 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 that I do. That's out of it was context. just like right, right. I know it's just a gag. In, it's like in a running GTA, gag. I just used to because you can do it. Like, and this is what I always say to people. People are like, oh, you're you're fucking sick, man. Why do you like kicking dogs? Well, the thing is, I didn't fucking animate the dog kicking. Scene sequence I, i'm not the guy who fucking sat in his studio working on like the animations for kicking a dog and like getting the motion cap for that like you know what i mean he's the sicko like whoever fucking right. sat down in a meeting and said okay guys we really need to make sure that the player is able to kick dogs that's the sicko it's not me can you make the dog's head really <laughs> yeah, snap it's back fucking, like it's really it's crazy though really in agony it's, cra it's crazy yeah, though do isn't do it like okay um yeah, we're, we're here to choose whimpering sounds for the dog after it's been kicked today it's gonna probably <laughs> take about two hours and then lunch is on us guys don't worry but let's uh let's get through this what we're we in got crunch is mode we got everyone to bring in their dog <laughs> <laughs> and we're just going to make them whimper and we're going to just make them sad uh, one by one and we're going to record them and then we'll just choose what's the best. So we got all these things here. We got a baseball bat. We got some some poking sticks. I think, again, I don't really like talking about this clip much, but it is that is kind of one of my favorite things to think about. The fact that like probably a great number of people were involved in making this like appear in a video game. Like yeah, they had yeah. to have had meetings and stuff. There's no way that just Jimmy from the art department did all this on his own right like somebody right. had to sign it off somebody had to fucking there, there's test a it somebody had... there are documents yeah, somewhere of course. where they're like right what are we going to let the player yeah, do yeah. in the game well they're going to drive cars and uh and they can you know hold up banks and they can punch people and they can kick dogs and no one went whoa 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 do we need that in the game and i guess someone else was like well god yeah you got to be able to kick dogs otherwise people aren't going to yeah. believe this <laughs> oh yeah okay yeah you're right yeah all right you guys are in the dog kicking department it's probably like a four-man team but you can you can kick a dog time. but like how come okay 
this is going to sound a bit weird, and I don't want this to appear in a game. But I can kick a dog, but not a woman. No, 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 no. Where's the line? Like, well, why can't you take a hamster out of its cage and stamp on it? You know what I mean? Like, but, but no, no, I'm just saying, like, where's the, where's the line? Like, why did they put it yeah, into no, the game right. in the first place? Okay, I think I you think what what's saying, happened right? is bear with me here. I think what's happened is it's a very common thing that when you are fighting against a dog a enemy enemy AI opponents, <laughs> like a, you, you go to a little camp and there's loads of guys hanging around around there a couple of them have got dogs and they're going to attack you right, right. so you've got to fight the guys and you've got to fight the dogs and that's like a yeah. thing and so i think what happens is that dog kicking thing gets put into the game right for other dogs sure. as well and so when you fight a wolf in the mountains suddenly it's got all of it i mean stuff, uh, okay you know? so that i mean we're just talking about gta i'm just mostly talking about gta here but actually honorable mentions to red dead the daddy of all animal abuse right because Oh, How God. many animals yeah. in that game had what must they have had to animate, like, you know, being shot in the head or kicked or being like uh, T-boned by another horse or, you know what I mean? Like, God damn, like, uh, but wait, so this much is of their budget. We've had before, though, where you can also run over children and, no, you, you know, can't, I mean, though. you can, there's no, like, kill old there's grannies no, and stuff. Like, there's, no, there's not. Right you there? can't kill children in any video game. I think it's actually against the law. Yeah, no, I, I believe it is, and rightly so. Like, that's why there's no children in any of the Fallout games or, like, there, there are children that you can speak to, but you can't shoot them or anything. Like, it's... Uh, it's a thing, right? I'm pretty sure it's a thing. I feel like yeah, yeah. there's I no children like in GTA we've... games that you ever are able to like right. run over with your car and stuff. No, there, but there are Sadly, kids in no. Cyberpunk. Can, oh, you, right, okay. And I'm sure there were there were kids in uh, The Witcher. Weren't there kids in The Witcher? I don't Witcher? think so, no. Not, not that I there's recall. There's some pretty dark stuff in some of these. But the point is, I guess the point I was trying to make wasn't about kids. It was more about people versus animals. Yeah. You know, kids we're quite are happy. people. Yeah. We're quite happy yeah, murdering yeah, God, hundreds yeah, and hundreds quite, of people. I but. mean, I just I drive on the sidewalks in GTA V. <laughs> <laughs> like, I quite happily plow over anybody, but... You know, I get it. Grannies, well, you name it, whatever. You're right. It is a weird. It's a, it's, it's it is weird. so interesting. So, it, as the so, kids would say, it's a bit of a weird champ. Yeah, that's a bit of uh, maybe not so pog actually when you think about it. No, that's not yeah. pog. It's cringe. That's mate, cringe. I'm a cringing. So going back to what we were talking about before, um, I've, I've I've started watching The Crown. Um, oh, I mean, I mean, I've been meaning to watch that actually. I want to see that. I, I kind of like uh, the history of the royals and stuff. I know it's not meant to be super realistic, but I I still kind of am interested enough that I'd probably get around to it watching. It is interesting. Yeah. It's really you know interesting. the uh, the fucking papers went nuts about it. Like mainly, I think the Daily Mail, because of course that's like the royal family's biggest mate. As a well, it's kind of hotting up now too, though, isn't it? Aren't aren't isn't the show up to the point with Diana and Thatcher and and a bunch of right? Yeah, it's got old Gillian Anderson is playing as is she Margaret Thatcher? Oh wow, she's great mm. Gillian Anderson everybody actually. loves Gillian Anderson I God. don't fucking give a shit I haven't she's, given a shit but, since the 90s when she was no, numero but uno she's in come FHM. over to the UK and she's doing either. loads of British sort of accent sense she's no and good. everything she's in is good like she's, she's not in good. i think she, she must she be a good. rare sort of case where americans can come over and do british accents because i find for the most part they are not very good at that whereas on the other side british um actors going over to america and then doing american accents um i've been i've been fooled many times like like stringer bell before before anybody really um knew who idris elba was um in the wire stringer bell i just assumed he was just like an american guy you know like he was yeah, i was totally I, I didn't know he was convinced British his accent's yeah. excellent but like you know and uh, same with mcnulty as well actually i just figured mcnulty was uh was just sort of like an american actor i didn't realize what's the, what's the name of the guy benedict cumberbatch his american accent is dr strange is not very no, good. No, I mean, it's so, just a I'm little not bit saying, sort like, of like, <laughs> I am a doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like, some right. of them are terrible, obviously, like, and, and vice versa. But I, I found, I find, for me personally, I've been, um, I've been like fooled. She went to London by. So British by the way, G- Gillian Anderson American went to London also, Film School. She, Gillian Anderson went to London Film yeah. School. That helps. She lived I mean, in Crouch End. She went to <laughs> Coleridge Primary it's School. It's such an English name, isn't it? Crouch End. Yeah, Crouch End. <laughs> Crouch End. <laughs> Doesn't fucking Greater mean anything. But, I mean, but she became <laughs> famous in the X Files. 
you know, she was the X Files was Gillian Anderson for me, and then obviously she disappeared for a while, but then she came back and she did. She was in Hannibal. I watched all of that. She was great in that. It's terrible. I watched all of The Fall, which is um, a great like TV. These are all shows TV. Mrs. F loves, by the way. I'm just saying. I this love to The piss Fall. I watched all of that, and I also, uh, you know, and American Gods. She was in that for a little bit. Oh, I didn't. And I, so I, I feel get like into that. That was her. way too. I I don't mind weird, but the, that was just like. I that just is couldn't... Neil Gaiman shit in a nutshell. Yeah, fairies and wank and weirdness and some people love it, but yeah. I, I couldn't get it either. No, I didn't. I just... it, it frustrated me because it was just too off the wall. Like felt like there was no. Yeah, it did feel <sighs> like way too sense. off the wall for me. I don't know. Maybe it was, it was just like what? Like what are the rules? What are the fucking rules in this universe? Yeah, do you, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I watched the other day? Yon, Yonderland. Have you ever heard of that? No. So no. You, you, you've heard of Horrible Histories, right? Yeah. God, my, my kids classic, love that. Classic kids show. Yeah. My kids adore that show. It is great. They, they it made a sitcom funny. called Ghosts All right, okay. on the BBC that that's really fucking good. Oh, I is love that ghosts. the one where the girl goes moves into yes. like the the old mansion and there's tons yes, of yes. dead people still and there? She can see them. She, she can gets see a head them, injury. Her she can can't. see them and hear them. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, that was. So good, they actually. also like made that. Yonderland with for Sky, and again, Sky not makers of good TV shows. I don't think they've ever made anything good other than uh, apparently someone, someone in my chat last night. That's not Sky. That's HBO. No, Chernobyl was uh, Sky um, uh, Sky funded. I think not uh, not not like made by Sky, but Sky right. money for sure. Was Let's involved. have a look. Uh, okay, it's uh, I believe the that. series was produced by HBO in the US and Sky UK. All right, well, all right, okay. that's their good one. That's the only one I can think of. Oh, and Gamora as well. I'm pretty sure they bankrolled some of Gamora, which is I mean, if they put money excellent. into it, that's okay. Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't feel like a Sky show. Sky shows no, always no. feel a bit I shit. Know. Yonderland is fucking awful. Okay, it, it's really awful. <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting to and the nitty gritty. We are. Let me get down to it. We're, so we watched it last night because my dad recommended it to me. Bless him, and he was like, "Have you watched Yonderland yet?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, I remember him telling me to watch that." So we watched it last night. Me and Mrs. F are sitting there. Two minutes in, we look at each other and we're just like, Ugh. and we watched the whole episode and it's only 22 minutes long. It honestly felt like it was an hour long. And my wife said, she was like, is this really only 22 minutes? And she was like, check in. She was like, oh, this feels like an eternity. It's, it's oh, so bad. Oh, I hate bad. when shows are it's like that. It's so, so, so bad. You're just slogging and through it just to see if it's worth watching. And, but oh, you know the, already that it's not. You know within a minute yeah, this ain't yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah. And you give it a chance, but it's just, it's just never. I hate it when there's one actor or actress or child actor usually who is so fucking bad that you can't like pay any attention anymore. Like you, you, you can't you're, get like, past every it. time you can't get you can't get over it. It just yeah. pulls you out of it. So and it's like, oh god, that's happened a couple of times to me. Yeah, it, it almost happens in the Expanse because there there's, there's a there's a woman with an English accent in the Expanse and she's just I think it's just the worst. <laughs> <laughs> right, and it almost ruins the whole show for me because I shame. love the Expanse. But, uh, um, that's a show um, I couldn't get. I into watched. Again. Um, I, I finished watching a couple of shows recently. I, I watched on my own. I, I watched Dark. I watched the whole thing through. What did you think of, of wait of series one or the or the whole run? The whole run, uh, series okay. one, two, and three. Wow, I loved it. Uh, every series I thought was. And did you watch it at normal speed? Yeah. Wow. I watched it at two times speed quite a lot of the time. Okay, what? Well, uh, and uh, other bits uh, I I'm skipped. just curious, like, where you got up to where you decided that it was too boring for you to All watch. Because right. there's there's kind of like a, a point in the show, I feel like every show, where you it sort of hooks you in. I, like, right. I, I tried watching it previously, and I couldn't really get through half of the first episode. But I was watching it dubbed, and um, I, I'm not a fan of, of dubbing generally. No, no, I, I always watch the um, subtitles. So when I came back to watch it subtitled, I enjoyed it more. But it took a, it, it definitely took me a little while to get into. It was interesting enough to keep me going, but I, I feel like after a certain point, and I'm not exactly sure how right, to right, pinpoint right. that, I, I was hooked, and I really, really liked it. I loved where it was going. So and stuff. my issue with it was... These episodes don't need to be an hour long. And I feel like any of the fucking shows that have hour long episodes, you're going to have half of that episode, people standing and looking at each other in a darkened area. Yeah, that's pretty much it. There's a lot of pondering, a lot of wistful looks, a lot of like just I don't need to see the person come in the front door, walk into the hallway, put their keys down, get a glass of water, cough <coughs> and then go, oh, hey, how are you? Just cut to the chase. Oh, I know, but that all that cut to the chase. All that, it's all that, too much all that fucking about. All that stuff kind of um, is more enjoyable when you realize, like the the sort of overall like goal of the 
of the show and like what's what's happening like did you so like how how far into it did you get like what the end of series one? Oh, you watched all of the, series one yeah oh, i watched wow, the whole okay. of series one Jeez. and by the end of i was it, hooked I was like, by I, about halfway through series one so i wanted to know what was in the fucking cave and all that shit i wanted to right. hear what's going on here and i was intrigued okay but it was just it was just so cocking slow i don't know about dark i'm really half i'm really half half on it i it's just kind of hated slow. it oh i loved it, I'm, I, thought I, mean, it was I mean i'm not saying it needs to be fucking roland emmerich you know independence no, yeah, day super fast enough. and wank I mean, but it's just yeah fair enough it's just if the characters aren't that interesting do we need to spend like what? What is it? Twelve hours watching this story play out. Okay, well, listen. And I, you know that the way these things work is, it's like here's the interesting hook that's going to hook you in. Like Lost, Lost did the same shit. Showed you some of the interesting stuff, and then there's just filler and boring crap. I by love the, side the of it. whole like. Uh, I'll spoil it a little bit. So if you're listening and you're planning on watching it, maybe don't listen to this bit. But. Um, I, the thing that the thing I found really interesting about Dark and and part of what kept me going was I loved how I loved how characters from present time could travel in time either mm. to the past or the future and get stuck there and still age right, right. Um, relative to like you know the time that we're on right now yeah, yeah. or get stuck there but then the 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 repercussions of people getting stuck there. Uh, in those times, but then having to live there and just sort of having to put up with it had mm. huge consequences down the line, right? Because it yeah, meant yeah. that they would do things that normal humans would want to do, obviously, like create children or create a life for themselves. But oftentimes they were doing this with somebody that they didn't even realize they were related to somehow down right, the right. line or whatever, which would then just introduce new problems and stuff. And it was like, it was just such a cool, it's just such a cool idea. But season three is like a bit of a trip at first, but it just wraps up so nicely. Like it, it makes mm, okay. the, the end of season three and the end, the, therefore the end of the entire show. Um, ex it well, it, it explains it super well. And it's, it, you're that's, not left feeling really like, oh shit. Like there's a couple of things that you look back and you're like, okay, some of this stuff wasn't explained super well, but it was just like kind of used to bridge you over to like other parts of the story or whatever. Right. And you kind of look back and you're like, uh, what do I want to know more about? But actually like overall, the whole thing wraps up really nicely. It's good. So I'm trying to, I want to know, imagine if these TV shows, because sometimes mostly TV shows like take place over about a year, right? And so you can expect a season to be a year. Yeah. Like, because right. that's usually right, right, how long right. it takes to get yeah. out. They do one season a year. It feels like a, you know, usually at the end of the year, maybe they're going on a summer holiday and they'll come back and it'll be the new year starts or whatever, right? It feels like a thing. Yeah. Um, are we going to have like a COVID season? Is like season five of this series going to be suddenly COVID is in this place and everyone's in lockdown yeah. they're wearing masks like you Depends know on the show. Some, some shows might might try it some some shows do you reckon, might not do have you a choice cinema is gonna add this or is Think it gonna how be this? boring covid's been it has Obviously, been but for the people that haven't been frontline medical workers or suffering from the disease or whatever but or have been lost thing, their jobs like but think an how incredibly fucking boring memorable event in yeah, but our you don't want to see and i've just lived through i don't want like the what, the reason these shows are interesting is because they show you something where maybe you haven't lived through it like it's inventive and it's a fiction if it's literally like hey remember lockdown well now that it's over we're gonna have a whole series about it. it's like fuck so what off. about the crown though for example do you know what I mean? What, the like queen the barely leaves the house for a whole season? Imagine the crown was filming <laughs> this, you know, modern day. Because I, I don't know if events, the crown right? will will cover modern day. Eventually, it, no, it probably it'll, won't. It'll probably, I, I'd imagine that the crown will probably, because kind of like after, it's, it, it, in terms of like royalty and stuff, kind of after Diana passed away and stuff, I think I think history for the royals has been pretty it's been boring. Dull. Yeah. Yeah, William and Harry boring. grew up um, and got married. Like, and had what's kids. what's the big excite? I mean, the Prince most Charles exciting made thing, sausages. right? The most exciting thing that's happened is um, Prince Andrew didn't sweat for a couple of years. I mean, I guess they could have Prince Andrew and <laughs> Epstein. That's an episode. Yeah, I suppose. But again, there's like maybe eventually they'll do it. But I can't imagine that they're they're in a mad rush to get to that. No, you're right. Line. I think I it's think too recent history won't translate. I think when you look at a lot of stuff in the Crown, it is things like the Falklands crisis or, or actually a lot earlier often stuff like I mean that's that. a major historical thing I mean that was the big turning point for Thatcher right like like without right, Falklands right. I don't think she would have ever even been re-elected right at the time like she was pretty unpopular 
And the the whole Falklands thing just sort of turned it around for her, from my understanding. I'm not like super. So into by the way, history, one of the criticisms of the show is that those two events, the Charles and Diana stuff and the Falklands stuff, did not happen at the same time. No. Like they they've they've put them together. The writers of the show have put it together sure. for the sake of the drama. So in in regards to are they going to have COVID stuff or, or, you know, how interesting can it be for the Royals? I guess in a way they could just try and make it more interesting dramatically somehow. Do you think but that like, um, you know, with everything going on with COVID, the second wave is like hitting pretty hard. There's like, there's lots of places that are potentially going back into lockdown, but they seem to be delaying a lockdown because they know people really want to like have a good Christmas or whatever. Right. Do you think that we as like a Western society probably place way too much emphasis on Christmas. I mean, I think we do like obviously commercially and stuff like that, but like, right. Even with all this going on, like, you know, it's, 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 it's probably just this year. Like, you know what I mean? Like you shouldn't, you shouldn't really be having 40 people over to your house for Christmas this year. Let me tell you something. I don't know anyone who takes Christmas more seriously than my mum. She is fucking obsessed with Christmas. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure she's not alone. And no, no, she's not. Like, like, people lose their minds for Christmas. They do. The entire year comes down to this one day. As the, as the year narrows towards Christmas, it's like becomes such a huge focus in the minds of so many people. It is bizarre. Yeah, I, don't I mean, get Christmas it. is all right. Yeah, I, you know, my kids love it. I, I know same, why. Yeah. They I, love it because of the presents. I do. I, I would not celebrate Christmas had if not for having children. I just wouldn't bother. Like, I wouldn't. I wouldn't decorate. I wouldn't put up a tree. Nothing. I would just be like. I, I'm, I'm trying to remember what me and Mrs. F did before the kids. We'd have a tree. Yeah. We'd have presents. We'd have the family over. Like my mum would come up with with Mrs. F's parents. Yeah. And and we'd have a family meal, and that was it. Yeah. You know, and and now it's like a huge fucking deal because of the kids. Well, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, that's they love fine. It. They I love it. it I them. used to love it too when I was a kid, but like right, it's right. a lot of work when you're an adult, right? And and yeah, a lot of Jesus. work that almost just doesn't really seem worth it if not for kids, you know? Like Yeah. I, I do I make the effort for for my kids because I know they like it so much. Yeah. But I wouldn't make that much effort like without kids. I just wouldn't. It's such a big deal for some people. Uh, maybe some years, maybe if I was feeling like really fruity, I'd put up a tree. But I wouldn't every year. Like you know what I mean? Like it, I yeah. think it's 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 part of culture. It's part of a social community fabric which people it need to keep you know yeah, yeah there's a lot of that too, going yeah. and, and and inform like a kind of build this. At least, sort of, if not community spirit, at least like an awareness that, that you know that you should spend time with other people in a world where we're so increasingly detached. Yeah, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's a good point. It's an excuse to yeah. see people and do stuff. It it it's necessary for for to keep us being who we are. And I think I think that's it's a very British thing as well. The the, the British Christmas where you see your family and you do these sort of weird traditions and watch the queen's speech with your grandma Ugh, or whatever oh, yeah. my mom is obsessed and it's with i don't that. know it's it's a funny old thing and it's going to be i mean it's going to be different this year i think it's interesting from a point of view of tradition as well like i know my parents like their their view on christmas and how they celebrate christmas and stuff feels very much like they grew up in the, like the 1950s and 60s and it's almost like a you know, like, uh, like for them, Christmas is like Bing Crosby Christmas, you know, like the North, the very North American over the top, right. like, you know, chestnuts roasting on an open fire and you have your eggnog and you have your sweaters and stuff. And like, it's a big deal, right? Like that's what right, they grew right. up with. Mm. Uh, and, and therefore I grew up with it being kind of a big deal, but maybe not so much of a big deal. And like, I'm passing on this tradition, but I'm just, I'm, I'm interested to see how it evolves, like, you know, what my kids will do with their kids and, and so on and so forth. Like, yeah. I wonder if it'll lessen or if it'll, if it'll like amplify or, you know what I mean? Like, it's, right. I think you have to weigh up, like I, a lot of people are criticizing the idea that you're able, able to, it's certainly in the UK, we're allowed to meet up with our families over this sort of, we have sort of a Christmas period where you can, you can still, you know, do, you can get do, on with it if you want. Of, yeah. Yeah. But and, you got to do it responsibly. And I, I'm, I understand that. And I'm, I'm not actually not going to see my family um, uh, that time. But I can. I, I'm gonna ring. I'm gonna ring up my mom, and we're gonna get a chat on Zoom. I'm gonna ring up all yeah, my relatives course. I haven't spoken yeah. to for a while, and I'm gonna, you know, make an effort to to talk to people I haven't haven't the, talked the to main, for a while. The main reason I used to love Christmas 
like apart from the, the the kids love it was that it meant time off work yeah i used I to love that, that too that we would chill at home for like a week and a Two half weeks or whatever or and it was whatever for free you know yeah. like and if and you, you were lucky enough to be high on the and, pecking order you could um you could swing a bit more time as well right and right i used to love the that. skeleton but crew now, over christmas was almost uh was 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 almost just as good as as fully being off right because you just in yeah. a sense like nobody you're right, does right? anything and the thing the thing about it is is that you know you've got to get your shopping in before all the shops close on Christmas and you've got to do all this other stuff. So you end up sort of almost like preparing yourself for a little break or yeah, yeah. away where yeah, you can yeah. just kind of feel like, yeah, I don't have to do any shopping. I don't have to do much else. People, you know, I have to, you know, visit for a while and we'll have a drink and it'll be quite friendly. And it's always, it's always very jolly. I don't know. Like it's always better than, slightly better than you expect as well. Cause you think, oh, I'll have to spend this time with my parents. But actually once you're there, you know, it's, it's, it's actually quite nice. So anyway, we're going to end this podcast because it, if you're listening to this on Christmas, I hope you, um, I hope you, you've just spent all Christmas listening to, to this someone. has been a longer one than usual. Well done. Christmas is done now. You missed this it. This is us done till the new year, right? So Is it? We're not doing one next, well, I, next week? Well, will you want to do one on Christmas Eve? Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm down. Well, Jeez, it's like I'm a, an hour in the morning. I mean, one on, yeah, I got on nothing Christmas else Eve. to do. What the fuck else have I got to do? Christ. Yeah, same. No, we neither. All right. Well, thank you for listening, everybody. Um, have a we'll wonderful have a Merry Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. Well, maybe well, you might get another one before the new year depending but um but yeah have a good christmas stay safe uh, be responsible and stuff and um thanks for listening and goodbye goodbye, goodbye. goodbye.